Hi there. In this lecture, we see Bobby Fischer against Yefim Geller in the 1961 Bled Tournament, round six. E4 from Bobby Fischer. We see E5 from Geller, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e5. A6, bishop a4, d6. This is the modern Steinitz variation. White castles. Bishop g4. More usual is bishop d7. Breaking that absolute pin and for example c3 g6 d4 bishop g7 this situation white should have only a small edge this is pretty committal bishop g4 so maybe prepared you know specifically for this game to surprise fisher fisher plays h3 bishop h5 now is played c3 and now queen f6 outrageous fisher plays d4 g4 not d4, g4. If he plays d4, there'll be big trouble on f3. You can see at least one point is to double the pawn. So g g4 is a key move here. Instead of queen f6, before we get into that, if bishop e7, perhaps white could get a small edge by taking on c6 and playing d4. This is, you could argue, a small edge for white. So after queen f6, yeah, we have g4. Bishop g6, and now Fisher plays a very energetic move. Can you guess, if I give you five seconds here, what would you play with white? Very, very energetic. Okay, d4, the fight for central control is very evident in this game. With that absolute pin, there is already uh, pressure mounting on e5, and this ac accentuates it, even at the cost of a pawn. If rook e1 had been played as an alternative, in fact, for example, like this, this is also a good continuation for white if black has the castle queen side especially so but d4 is uh very dynamic bishop takes e4 offering a kind of gambit knight bd2 we have the bishop going to g6 if bishop takes f3 here knight takes f3 e4 is an example rook e1 knight g7 this is going to be very pleasant for white this position as an example so the bishop went back to uh, g6, and now bishop takes c6, b takes, d takes e5, d takes, and guess what Fisher plays here with the king in the center, if I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay. Knight takes e5, yeah, with the king in the center, this is possible. We have bishop d6 being played. If queen takes e5, then rook e1 wins the queen, for example like this, big advantage for white. So bishop d6, we have knight takes g6, it's a very strong position in any case, even if knight d f3 is played just reinforcing this situation, queen e2 looks at a6, say taking here, and let's say knight takes e5, King b7, f4. This is pleasant enough for white as well. These scenarios are, are going to be pleasant for white, usually with an advantage as an example. So anyway, knight takes g6. We have queen takes g6. On the more adventurous, h takes g, trying to open up the rook. There's knight e4, unfortunately for black, with tempo hitting the queen. And after knight takes d6 check, we have another check here. Queen e2, this is really strong for white. For example, here, bishop f4 trying to lure the queen away from e7. And just, it's a big advantage for white, this scenario. Look at black spawns, they're shredded. So, and by the way, if queen d7 there, then the other rook comes in. And again, you know, this, this is just a massive position for white. So queen takes g6, and we have rook e1 check, king f8, knight c4 h5 now as with many fisher games as soon as fisher takes off an opponent's bishop of a certain color he is often looking like a hawk for opportunities on that color complex which has been weakened here he's snapping off a dark square bishop and there is severe punishment to be meted out here after c takes on the dark squares the dark square bishop without a counterpart fisher's not going to let go of all the dark square features of this position now he has superiority he has a bishop on the dark square with no counterpart 
and he prompts more dark square weaknesses with bishop f4. Black's in a very difficult position. Black played d5 here. If h takes g4, trying to get this kind of attack, it's extinguished. Queen takes d6, and this is winning material. Yeah, just winning material. If rook d8, this is probably one of the better tries. Queen e2, if hg, h4. And this situation, g3, black trying to make use of the rook. White does actually have to play carefully. F takes is probably the, the best way. And after takes, bishop takes d6 check. And g takes will be winning an exchange at the very least. Yeah, if bishop takes g3, by the way, White would have no advantage here in this situation. It actually justifies Black's play significantly. So yeah, an interesting situation. But all in all, it was necessary here to play Rook D8 to try and stay in the game. But with D5, more pawns on light squares, adjacent dark square weaknesses. And there's a very, very punishing move on a diagonal here. Very, very instructively punishing. I wonder if you can guess, if I give you five seconds to pause the video here, what would you play with white? Okay, very punching indeed. Queen b3. Yeah, looking on this diagonal, or even a3 if you wanted. That would be winning material. The knight would have to go in front just to give the king g8. If instead uh, g5, you know, black can actually play knight h6 and squeal out uh, to some extent with white having a clear advantage but no knockout blow yet. If queen e2 had been played, then knight f6. And again, you know, black's squealing out a little bit here, it's letting black off the hook. So Fisher is precise and punishing with his move queen b3. There's no let off here the way he's played it. The gravitational pull of Fisher exploiting downsides, theoretical or otherwise, of the opponent's position is huge. He's going to bring the opponent down based on just the current weaknesses. He's not going to let Black out of this predicament. Very punishing. H takes G. If knight e7, then we just pin the knight, queen b4. And here, Morphe style, can you see what white could do here? Morphe's opera game springs to mind a little bit one of the mechanisms uh, so white's play here would play I hope you can guess rook takes e7 would be crushing for that pin and just winning material and if here then it's going to be check check and mate as an example so h takes g4 is played and now yeah just winning a piece on the diagonal is is possible but fisher improves on that Queen b4 check is possible, you know, knight e7, this is winning a piece. After h4, you know, there's no counterplay for black to speak of. But Fisher improves on that with queen b7, trying to put the rook in a bad place first. We have g takes h3 check. It looks scary to allow black this check, but it does close down the rook. Bishop g3, and now rook d8 is played. It's pointless to play h2 check, because king h1. There's no follow-up check. And if here, you know, rook takes, check, and mate. So after bishop g3, we have rook d8. And now going back to this diagonal with a vengeance, because it's going to be picking up the rook on d8. Yes, not just dark square punishment, but putting things on dark squares to pick up with check is pretty nasty. <laughs> so the game ended here. If knight e7, then it is, you can see this improvement, because white picks up, picks up now the rook with check. And we have that nice, neat finish potential, for example, like that. So a super crushing game. Absolutely crushing. This is the game end position. Instructive takeaway points. Well, you don't want to set off on a bad foot against Fisher. If you give Fisher a, an opening advantage and downsides, sometimes he's not going to let you off if it's after 1960, especially. Fisher's become razor sharp, extremely punishing. His gravitational pull and exploiting downsides, theoretical or otherwise, is huge. The dark square weaknesses, magnificently exploited with this move, queen b3. So precise, indeed. Not letting black squeal out with any uh, opportunities to squeal out. 
all squashed flat any dreams of coming out of that position just taken away a really super crushing game very vivid example of punishing king in the center and exposing dark square weaknesses wreaking havoc around the position okay thanks so much hi guys if you enjoyed this video lecture you might want to get more at my course Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher, which I had a blast creating over 25 hours of video content. I tried to get the most instructive juice out of every single game covered and picking the most important games from this period. I had an absolute blast creating it and I think you will have an absolute blast checking it out. And it's at a big discount code with this link, you know, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher has the discount code. So I hope you do check that out. Thanks very much.